of minutes we'll just let someone the people who have yet to join let them join in the couple of next I mean, next couple of minutes and we'll start by 7:35 please ask any of i mean your friends who have maybe missed out joining to join as soon as possible all right i'll just start in by 7:35 
yeah there's this like a lot of us right now so we'll just start now all right so i'll just start sharing my screen in a couple of seconds just give me a second yeah so hope, hope i mean all of you are i mean able to see me clearly yeah so i will just start with my sharing my screen hmm So yeah, I hope my screen is visible. If it's not, you just uh, ping me in chat and I'll be helping you with uh, resharing again. So in the last class itself, we were like, I mean, looking at data types and a couple of more in, um, like data types like list, strings, boolean, and a lot more about set, tuples, and dictionaries. Today, we'll go in a little notch higher with regards to what do you do when you want to actually store your data into i mean like um, a place where you can access the data so the way that you access any sort of a data and you perform any sort of function or like an action with that is basically stored in the form of a function so have you guys learned about functions before has anyone able to be i mean create a function by himself Speaking mean chat if you guys have already used functions before and if you guys have already um, learned about functions in your previous semesters Yeah, Preman, and I see your hand is raised. Have you learned about function before? Yes, sir. Yeah, as soon as you ask, I mean, I asked you to unmute and you unmute, just please start speaking so that I guess, I mean, I'll have to again mute you and unmute you. Yeah, have you learned about functions before? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I think you guys have an idea about functions. So I'll just go on a little I mean, in depth about this and we'll see in more in practical about this. So the idea of functions is that whenever you want to have lines of your code that are going to be reused again and again, those all are used to be, I mean, those are stored in the function. So basically, if you see the sample out here itself, so I mean, these are the libraries, don't worry about the library names for now. But basically, they are used is like um np dot array is basically used to create like an array or basically like understand this like in any list. Okay, so I mean, if you take any list of an example, let's say list one that we saw in the last lecture itself. So in list one, you want to save this um like three or four different lists. Then that can be stored in the form of a like data, and as soon as you want to actually use these functions for like you know, you want to like let's say find. Uh, values and find a sum of it you can use these like uh, function which is like we have to define function one function one is basically taking the value which is equal to sum of all the columns that you have here by two this will be like a very i mean uh superficial explanation we'll come to this in detail when we actually go about learning about pandas and i mean these different libraries all right so i mean we'll just first introduce the libraries and then we'll come back to the functions but i wanted to have just an idea about what functions are before we actually start learning about them so we'll just go through like the I mean modules, which is like uh, which is pandas and numpy. So in the last class itself, we were learning about data types. So we'll just continue from there. So pandas is just another like a uh, module or like a library for using these data types. So let's just like we had learned about lists and tuples, like let's how we had learned about list and tuples in the previous ones. So yes, uh, it's like we had learned about lists list in here. I mean. It is used as a ordered collection of items the same way the list you can store in the form of like uh, list one is equal to list one two i mean a number of one two three four five the same way it pandas is like a library that has a data type called pan uh, called pandas data frame so data frame is just like a list but the only difference is that the list is a one dimensional data type which is basically that it has only a list of numbers or list of i mean integers or list of strings or list of any simple item but in the case of these data frames these data frames are basically list of lists so you can see that these are multi-dimensional lists that is they have your your um list basically is a list of columns also out here column one column two and column three and also a list of your 
index or basically your rows. So this is these rows one, two, three are basically rows. So a pandas data frame is defined as a basically a data structure that is basically having two dimensions. That is one is a row and one is a column. So this data structure that is storing a list, I mean a list of rows and a list of columns alongside each other is basically referred to as a data frame. All right. And a data frame is basically having rows and columns, but in case your data frame is such that it has only one single column and like multiple rows, then that data frame is referred to as a series. So just imagine our data frame is like a table, which has like five columns and five rows. But in that table, if only the first column is useful for me, so I will, I mean, if I drop the rest of the columns and what is left out of that, this one single column is basically referred to as a series. All right. So the point is that you need to have an idea about what a series is just a, just a column having many different rows, whereas data frame is like having multiple rows as well as multiple columns. So if you see the definition out here, series is basically a one dimensional labeled array capable of holding any data type. So it can be like a list, it can be like a tuple, it can be again. If you see, when we'll come to spider and we'll come to implementation of your, I mean, any data science problem, your data frames are going to be your main source of a data structure that is going to be used for storing any variable. Whereas in, when you come to like NumPy, which will come together in forward, then that NumPy is basically an array that is like a list of tuples or a list of sets or a list of dictionaries that will be storing your numerical values. So we will come to that when we discuss about NumPy. But for now, what you can remember is any sort of tabular data that you want to store, you can store in the data structure of data frame. All right. So, I mean, as I mentioned, like the series is basically data structure that is storing a single column for a data frame. And this data that you store is basically stored in a data frame with the help of collection of series. So let's take, I said that series, I mean, just like I said, the string is a collection of characters list as a list is a character. I mean, is a collection of your items, the same way a data frame is a collection of different series. That's what I mean about data frame that we were having to do about a pandas. Now we'll come to what is NumPy. So NumPy is just another library again, like pandas and the main data frame, I mean, or the main data structure that is used by NumPy is referred to as an array. So if you're coming from Java background, if you're coming from JavaScript background, you might know what is an array or like if you're coming from C also, you might know what is an array. Array is just another data structure that is going to store values in the form of like a structured uh, index. That is basically you will be having rows and columns indexed from zero to infinity in terms of columns and in also the same in terms of rows. So in those, both of those scenarios, your um, like columns and index, I mean, uh, in columns and rows will have different indexes and based on that index, you'll be able to store, let's say you want an index for like um, this 12 number so, or this 16 number, then the index for the 12 or the 16 number for 12 number is 0 comma 0. And the index for the 16 number is 1 comma 1. So the point is that your index is basically used for retrieving the element out of this NumPy array. Nothing complex, you might have already come across this when you are working in previous like languages about what is array and what is different types of arrays. What is one dimensional array? What is n dimensional array? What is two dimensional array? So there is already in uh, like in your knowledge previously. But the only concept to remember in that here is that you can use, I mean, arrays in with the help of NumPy and Py in Python by default. Array is not an inherent data structure in Python. You can use it with the help of this NumPy library. And it also has like a lot of functionality that you can use. So out here in when you use array also, when you're creating an array, what is this, this A range? This range is basically your function that is going to create an array from zero to 14. So when you pass the arrange having an input 15, that means that basically your um, this A variable is going to store the array starting from zero up until 14. And when you say this reshape three comma five, that is going to basically have the index of your third row, it will like store an in three rows and it will create five columns. So if you see there is one row, this is two rows, this is three row. 
and again the index of this um is one this zero is zero comma one zero comma zero one is zero comma one and this 14 the similar way is three comma five so that is the whole point that basically i mean so again it is two comma two comma five so that's the whole point i mean the i mean the index of array or like uh this numpy array is basically starting from zero and it so this zero is zero comma zero and this 14 is two comma four that's the whole index of your numpy array so this is like a little more theoretical right now so we'll just go through the practical code once so this function would basically have i mean before this do you have any doubts in about what is a um, array and what is a pandas data frame do you have any doubt about that if you have any doubt I, you can just raise your hand and ask me right now sir yesterday class na kraale sir okay, i don't see any doubt so you can maybe if you have doubt you can ask right now or we can go forward sir yesterday class i mana youtube lo unte share chain sir whatsapp group lo right. so we'll continue so i mean as i was coming back to learning about functions now that we have an idea about what is pandas and what is numpy we can directly now go into the code of functions so what have we done here it basically we had like imported pandas just like I mean, if you remember in the last class itself you had learned about this import keyword this import keyword is basically used for creating like a, a file inside of your working directory so like you can imagine that this import pandas as pd is going to include all of your files that you have installed with the help of pip install and it will import that into your working directory of your this um function and then only you can be able to create your function and use these pandas and numpy libraries inside of your function so you can imagine that this import is basically to get all the material or all the code of this pandas library from the python package installer to the working directory that is basically your file and then it will be able to carry out this operation which is like creating a value i mean uh, creating and adding the values in your array so that's about uh what is import keyword then we'll come to what is this uh, data this variable so what have we done here we have created a data variable which is going to be storing a, an array which is again going to be like a list of lists so this array i have created which is basically you're having items of one two three and up until it's going to like 100 120 130 then i randomly have set up, set up this integers and this is going to be like a five cross three array and this array is basically stored into your data frame with the help of pandas library so whenever you're going to create an array you'll need a library known as numpy and it's going to have an index that is basically an np dot array it will basically take in your uh, list of element that you want to store in the array and the same way this data frame whenever you want to create a data frame whenever you want to create a table out of it you will need a library called pandas right so as we discussed before about pandas and numpy this data frame library is a pandas library and what we have done in the df equal to pd dot data frame data is basically we had taken in a uh, bit pandas data frame out by creating this uh, data variable and that with data variable we have converted into data frame and stored in the df library and the df variable and this df dot columns is basically going to store your um like abc as going to be the, the string and it will create a list that is basically list will contain a comma b comma c so this list and i'm typing this part out this list abc is basically nothing but you can imagine it like this way a comma b comma c all right it is about this basically this columns is going to store this list 
and it will name this all of these uh, data frame into like a list. So basically, this is going to be a column, the whole thing. This whole thing is going to be the B column. And you get the hang, right? So basically, the last column is going to have the C column name. C column. That is about it. I hope you guys got it. I mean, that's the whole uh, point of writing this df dot columns equal to list and showing the value inside it. Okay. Then your different, I mean, a function that we are coming to, that is the whole point of this slide. So this def function one is basically like what is going to take in is a column. So the any uh, structure or basically whatever function that you want to create, it has a specific syntax. Okay. So the syntax of creating a function is basically that you have to first define it with the def keyword. So this def keyword will basically act as a um, notification for Python that basically, okay, this def is basically going to create a function out you out for you. And based on this def keyword, whatever you type after it is basically going to constitute or basically going to define a function. So whatever name I'm counting here, function one, it is going to be the name of the function that I have to call for the execution of your function. So let's say if I'm calling it sum, if in some case, this is referred to basically as assigning a function or defining a function. Then I want to call it out here at the bottom. If I want to call it out here from function one, then that is what I will call with the, this same name. So if I'm renaming this as sum, I have to again call this as well as uh, this call with the same name that is going to be my sum. Got it? That is about it of, of uh, what is this function syntax while assigning. So after you have assigned the sum, what will happen is after assigning out here, you will secondly have to, just give me a second, after assigning out here, you will have to first and foremost, I mean, deduct or basically reduce your function that you're typing. You don't have to write this comment. These comments are basically for principles, for the purpose of going to be able to store your
there was something the meeting ended and i had to re yeah guys um the might there is some disconnection from the same i'll just re share my screen yes so i hope my screen is now visible all right so as i was mentioning um we'll just re uh, come back to this example so upon this what we had done is we had created a uh, we have created a function that is basically going to yeah what we had done is we have created a data frame this is going to store your data okay after that what we had done is yeah we had started by using this data frame which is going to be data is equal to np dot array and based on the data frame what we had done first thing is we had stored an array in the format of this data variable after taking this array that is going to make store your all of your data in the format of this rows comma columns that is going to be one two three four so your one number will go over here two out here similarly you get the idea right like this columns next when you want to actually store and like this in the format of a like SQL table or in the format of like a um like database, then you actually have to convert this into a data frame. Okay. So for doing that, what we had done is we had taken this data variable and we had assigned this period data frame. So like as I mentioned earlier itself, this data frame keyword is basically a function. So the data frame function, what it does is it takes your any kind of like a, a list or like a list of lists and convert that converts that into like a SQL table. So here I have like an index. One will be this column index, column one, column two, column three, column four. And same way, you'll also have a row index out here. This row index is basically how you query your data. Okay. And based on what, how you query this data, you'll be able to like call the data when you want. So whenever what we are actually going to do it out in the function is we're going to find the value that returns. I mean, uh, add all of them and find the half value of that sum. So let's say the value of one, two, three, four, one comma two comma three, comma four. So add all of these together. The value comes out to be ten. What our function is going to take is do is we take the total value of this sum and it will divide this by two. Okay. That is the whole point of this function. So, I mean, what until we have done is we have taken a, a data variable and we have stored it as an umpire array. After that, I mean, what you can think of this as a list of lists. And then what we are doing with DP or data frame is we are actually converting this into a data frame, or which is like a SQL database compatible. Uh, data type and after converting that we are giving the list of column name which is going to be a b and c for our set it's going to be column a going to be column c b and we save column c up until here you have cleared right should be clear up until now and then what we are doing basically is we are going to take in the value of your uh, function that is going to be passed as a column this is like a parameter for now just leave it for now then we'll come back to this when we will uh, discuss about the parameters so here we have defined a function name which can be anything in this case we can whatever we call it out here is the same thing that we should be calling when you are actually getting the function to be called okay so here function one is basically the name that we have given you can give it anything so this data frame is also nothing but a function name like this so data frame can be imagined like def data frame and you're passing in a list and based on that list, it is able to compute and give you the return value. Got it? So what this is also doing is what we are doing in this these two lines is basically we have defined a new variable called VAL that is going to be a value variable. What will that do? This value variable is basically going to first take out the sum 
of all the values that are there in this column. So here we are passing the DF A column. So the A column will have all the first elements of this list. So you can take an example of this 111, 45, 76. We'll add all of this together. So you just calculate and let me know whatever it is, one, whatever it is, 200 something. And based on whatever is the sum you have calculated, what the final division will do is it will divide by two. And whatever value you will get, it will be returned. That's the whole point of the function like I explained, right? If you have four numbers out here, and it will just add all of them together and divide it by two and get you the middle value, whatever the middle value is. In this case, it will be five. So the function will put will be five. Whatever it is, the whole gist of this was explaining what a function is. So now we come to the syntax of the functions. So as I said, the first thing you remember is that this whatever you pass up to the def function is basically going to be the name of your function, right? This is going to be a function name. And what you pass inside of this function name when you are uh, assigning this function is going to be parameters. So parameter is basically how you will be able to look at that function and what are you going to pass inside that function. If you see out here in the function one, when we are calling the function one, we are passing the parameter, which is the data frames first column, right? The data frames first column is what? This one, 200, I mean, 100, 11, all of this is the first column of my data frame, right? So that will be like an input to this function as a parameter. That is about parameter. Then what we are passing inside of this is basically your definition or whatever you can say, like a explanation of what your function is going to do. That is called like the documentation of the function or the document string of that function. That is basically what the function is going to do in simpler words as an explanation. Then what we will pass is the actual main functions logic in the function suit. So here what we have passed the logic that, okay, I want to have the variable stored called VAL. And our variable is going to store the sum of all the like uh, like values of this column and it'll sum and divide it by two. That is all about the val variable and whatever value you'll get, we'll return it as a VAL. That is going to be your, with your functions logic that will be stored in the function suit. And finally, whatever value you want to output or whatever you want to give it to the main code will be passed with the return expression. If you remember in the last class itself, we had learned about what is the return expression, right? Return expression is nothing but actually going to be as a keyword that is going to pass out something or it will be exporting or outputting something that you're taking in the function, right? So this is about functions. If you have any doubts with regards to functions or how do you actually use functions with the help of these libraries like NumPy and Pandas, you can ask right away before we start with the uh, different modules, other modules. Yes, you have any doubts? Anyone, if you have any doubts, you can just like, raise your hand and ask your doubts. Yes, anyone any doubts? We have learned about pandas and pandas and data frame. Similarly, we also went through the data types of NumPy and NumPy array. Now we'll move to some practical on based on our whatever learning we have done up until in pandas and NumPy, we'll go through their practicals. Before that, we'll, I mean, since we had in the first session only learning about your data frames, I mean, in your data types, so we'll go through that practical also now. Okay. So the point here is the code that first what we're doing is this list we have created. Okay. So based on this list, we'll see how they are appended together. So this list one we have created is like just having the number of one, two, three, four, five. And the list two is basically having the numbers of one, three, four, five, six, eighty. And simply we have created the third list as a concatenation from this above two lists. And it is going to store the data from the above two lists. It is equal to list one to addition of that. And the list three is going to have a concatenation of both of these columns, right? 
So the output of list three is something like this. List one item will be added out here. And list two item will be added out here, separated by a comma in between. That is about list three. And when you append some value to it, let's say you want to append 98, it will by default be appended at the last of this. So you can imagine that the list three is going to store this way. If you print again, you will be getting this response. It's going to be similar to like this. So your screen is not shaped. So your screen is not visible. We are unable to see your screen. It's, a, it's just showing us a demo. It's showing demo, sir. Sir, please check your connection, sir. Now it is visible. So it is visible right now. What we're doing no, basically okay. is this list one is going to store the list two data, list two is going to store the list two data, and this list three is going to be a concatenation or like a, a totaling of list one and list two items. So it is like having a, this um this ten odd numbers, right? I having this in, uh, when we append the eleventh item, it is going to be a ninety-eighth and uh like the integer. Then by default, your length will be. It is the point of this length, I mean, uh, length uh, list argument. Okay. After this, we'll be coming to what is, I mean, uh, referred to as when you create a new list. So, how do you create a new list? Basically, what you've done is we have created a list underscore new and showed all this value inside it. And then finally, what we have done is we have created a list new and three. I mean, at the third index, we are trying to append the list into the list we are appending this new value so this entire list is already there and inside of that what we are doing is we are adding this new value item where at the third index right this is zero, first, second and so here you will be getting a new value as a third item that is what the this um third new value item does that is about it Right now, we'll see about tuples. We had actually, I mean, seen the theory part last time itself. Now we'll go into the practical in depth so that we can be able to have a better idea about tuples. All right. So, what we're doing here is we have added this list tuple as a like tuple as a new data type here. And based on this data type, we are adding the like uh, first element, which is actually tuple, is basically having this list that we've created. We can put an into a tuple, okay. So by default, this will be our in like our tuple that will have been created with the help of your existing list only. This is going to be a tuple. The tuple value is going to be this. Yes, the intern is trying to speak something. Yeah, you have any doubts or anything?
All right. So let's continue. This this tuple is tuple one is basically having this values as the as the new list. And then what we are trying to do is we are trying to add hundred. But remember. Tuples are immutable, so this is not exactly equal to is not exactly equal to what we had written out here for the list because tuples are immutable, so you can't add any value to your pre existing uh, tuple and you can't edit any value out of this tuple. What you have to do is if you create a new tuple and add the elements to it one by one, okay? A similar kind of data type is referred to as a set. So set is basically a similar data type like a, like a tuple, but this set is a ordered tuple, you can call it. So the all elements in set is basically going to be ascendingly ordered from one to five. So if you see here, you can edit the items, I mean, in set, but you cannot actually change the order of the item because they are ascending order based data structure. Hope you get this. And then finally, what we had seen in the last class itself was about dictionaries. So dictionaries are nothing again, but a different I mean, uh, like, uh, data structure which is going to store the values as a key value pair. So edit one is basically going to be a very, I mean, as a key and storing the value one, two, and three. Similarly, the B tuple is, I mean, the B uh, key is going to store this value. TH is going to be the string. Okay. And this dict one, um, this when I'm trying to address this dict B's item, this the, I have to query it with the help of this B is going to be your key for this tuple. And what I will do this, I mean, when I do this, I'll get the response as this the. Similarly, when I'm trying to add a new item to this, I have to pass in a new key first. So once I add the new key, then only my new value will be able to be input. And the final output that I'll be getting for this case is 1B, A, B, and then I'll be having this E and 100 is going to be my new output, right? That is about it. Then what I've like mentioned out there is what we had seen today, where we had gone about, we are going to see about what is NumPy, what are Pandas data frame. So we'll go first through about the data frame, which will we'll go through first about the NumPy array. Then we'll progress towards the Pandas. All right. Before that, if you have any doubts up until what I've explained, what I've done is basically I've shown the practical of the last classes and given you a bit um hands-on with the last classes before we actually go with the hands-on of this class if you have a doubt or something you can ask right away all right hope you guys are able to hear me fine is there any doubt someone has any doubt something Nothing. So no, we'll sir. continue now. Okay, I see uh, Hari Lakshmi has a doubt. Hello. Yeah, please. Good evening, sir. Please, I have one minute to do, Hari Lakshmi. Sir, if you have a doubt or something, sir. you can like, ask right now. Good evening, sir. Hello. Please come okay, again. Am I audible? Yeah, please, yeah, you're audible. Please tell me. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Is the concatenation possible between the NumPy arrays? You cannot concatenate because concatenation basically means that you're increasing the size of that array. Mm. Whenever you define an array, basically you have a fixed size of that array. So you can add the individual number of this. All right. Yeah. You can't add a number, I mean, a NumPy array with another NumPy array without actually creating a new array. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. So you, I mean, when you want to create a new array, that's when you can use, uh, like a NumPy function, which is like, um, like you can create a new function. But that's why we use pandas data frame. I'll come to this 
in data frames you can concat so in, with the help of pandas library you can concat to data frame but you cannot concat to arrays in general okay. because in, in different languages also if you see and if you see in c also when you define an array you have to memory you have to allocate the, that part of memory into your c right into your like uh, c memory allocation right okay so you cannot correctly concat this array in c also the same way it goes in this uh, you cannot concat the same different arrays with the help of this numpy array, but you can use the concat function. The concat function is basically going to like take in the value of this array and create a new array out of it. So it will create a third array and it will allow the same uh, set of values to be stored in this. But okay. the, the easier way to do this is with the help of your pandas data frame feature. So I'll come to that when I discuss about pandas data frame about the concatenant. But by default, numpy is a array so it does not allow concatenation by default but you have to have a third option which is going to be like you get a new data if you create a new array and you concatenate in that so you pass uh like you create a new if you can see my scene we'll come to that arrays part again so i mean you can call in like create a new array if four is equal to in p dot no sir this is something you can do but you actually cannot concat in place that's about it yes, in sir. number you sir, can you please explain the entire code sir that numpy code yeah i am coming to that i was just explaining the part before that so if you haven't out before that you can ask me before the this code numpy code now i'll start explaining the numpy code itself so if that you have a doubt about with regards to numpy code you can ask me later on now i'm clarifying doubts only before the numpy code hope you guys have got it all right so we'll just continue with the numpy code now so this numpy code out here what basically it does is like first of all we just comment this part out What this part does basically is, I mean, we are creating the new array that is going to be labeled as A1. So A1 is nothing but a variable that is going to store a numpy array. Then we are passing in numpy.array, which is going to be a function that is going to create your array from scratch. We are passing in numpy array and you are creating a 3 cross 5 array that is basically 3, um, call, three rows and 5 columns an array of that, or like 6 in this case. So having this three by six array and in this array itself, what you're doing basically is you are first doing this, you are finding the cumulative sum of all the numbers. So the value that you're doing is basically you are using the come sum function in array. What that does basically is you find when to find the cumulative sum. So basically this first element will be one. The second element will be become three because the sum, sum of one and two is three. Then the sum of this four element is four plus two plus one, that is seven. Five is going to be five plus four plus nine, uh, two plus one, that is basically 12. Six is going to be again 17. That way, you are going to basically have a concat, I mean, like a, a cumulative sum, and basically you'll be getting the um, like larger array with the number of like accumulated sum of each of the number, right? That is about the cumulative sum function. Then what you're doing is basically here you are using like a different array, you are creating a new array. And on that, what you're doing is this is a very different I mean uh, function, which is the a1 dot a1 dot reshift. So basically, what this will do is you have this array of size what three comma six because you have three rows and six columns. Then what this will do is basically it will reshape first of all your array in the format of 6 comma 3 instead of your rows will be having columns and instead of your columns will be having rows so you can think of this like if you have worked with matrices before if you have worked with matrix like if you learned about matrix in maths what is a matrix it is like something that you have a list of numbers that is executed that is um it is displaced or it is distributed in the space right so if i want to draw this
take a simple example. One comma two, or three comma four. If I were to actually reshape this into like this matrix is basically a two cross two matrix. The order of this matrix is two cross two. If I were to reshape this in a one cross or like a four cross one matrix, how will it be done? Be done with the help of this union matrix. It is going to basically be like this. So this is how the reshaping will look of a four cross one matrix. Got it? This is how I reshaped a two cross two matrix into a four cross one matrix. Similarly, what happens is basically all of your rows become your columns and your column becomes your rows. So these all are all the same elements in the same row. So then they'll become a column. So the idea, I mean, most more important to understand um, apart from the individual items are this, that your column because it becomes your row and your rows become your column with the help of reshaping. But the elements remain the same because 3 cross 6 is also 18 and 6 cross 3 is also 18, right? So here this um, items are like seeming, having the same dimension. See, there is 18 items are there. The reshaping will only change their structure. will not change the whole numbers of that each row. But this A2 equal to A come will be actually changing the numbers also, but it will keep the on this orientation or the structure of the column and rows same as it is. Then what we're doing is basically we're having A1 dot dot product. If you guys remember what a dot product is, have you guys learned about what is dot product? Just raise your hand if you know what is dot product. You guys don't know what is dot product? Okay, never mind. So dot product are basically like a like a unit product that basically if you see in vectors also it is like you're only taking the multiplication of those columns which are there in the same row so if you see out here this is a like a one cross two matrix like a two cross one matrix and this is a two cross two matrix let's say If I want to actually find the dot product of this, this is a two cross one matrix. And this is a two cross two matrix. So the dot product that I find is basically going to be this. So this will be multiplied. by this again this is multiplied by this this will be cut out and what i'll be having is a two comma two matrix created so this will be multiplied by this one is multiplied by this same way this will multiply by two will multiply by four and two will also be multiplied by six so the final matrix that i'll be getting is three five Eight, twelve. This is about it. What is the dot product meaning? Right? Then, I mean, this is a, like a mathematical cooperation. You can do that by yourself. And what I'm then doing is I'm actually resizing it. So resizing basically is that it will take in the value and take this A. It will convert all of this we have like two cross two matrix or whatever we have earlier it was what earlier it was three comma six matrix then we reshaped it and became it became the whole thing became a six comma three matrix 
Now when we are doing a one dot resize, what will do it again? It will take this a one and it will resize that into again back into a three comma six matrix. So this will be, I mean, discovering about individual function that we will discover in the next session itself. For now, you can just remember all these functions. We will understand them in detail in the next session. So that is the idea about uh, like NumPy functions, NumPy RS code. Then we'll come to the next example, like where what we're doing is again NumPy dot zeros. It basically going to create a unit matrix or like a null matrix. It basically your function is basically going to like this function zero zeros is going to create a null matrix of five zeros. about creating a numpy dot zeros function so there's nothing difficult i mean this is just a simple explanation of how numpy dot zeros work then what next is is basically you are going to have is random functions basically numpy dot random is basically going to create a new array like it is taking to i mean it is going to create a new uh, like list basically of random integers but the choice is going to be after out of these six elements only one, two, four, five, six, seven itself. So these are like all individual functions of NumPy that will come to understand when we actually work with them. But again, I'll giving, I mean, I'll be giving you a better understanding of these functions in the next class so that you can be able to work with them on like a project level understanding or in general when you're actually trying to do it in terms of like application also, like if you're going to create a calculator app. There also you'll be using this on a arrays function where you'll be using arrays to for, for adding and subtracting to different integers. All of that will be done with the help of numpy arrays. So after that, I mean the algebraic functions of numpy will be coming again in the next class. For now, we'll be standing with pandas. If you have any attendance, I mean if you have any, any issues with regards to numpy now, you can ask before we start about pandas. Any doubts about numpy up until now? You can raise your hand and ask me out to have. Yes, in case it's not out, we can move forward. Last yeah, Bhavani, you have any doubts? Sir, the uh, repeat two, I don't understand that. Why is there repeat two? This repeat, uh, okay. All right. So what you're doing basically is, this repeat is basically like a multiplying function, okay? So this, I mean, whatever number of times you actually pass in the input, let's say if I put it in three out of this, it will then it will create a new array that basically is going to have, like this is a six cross, like three array, right? So basically it has six rows and three columns. Then this repeat will basically have the whole array repeated twice. So the A3 will have like 18, comma, three dimensions so like these whole numbers you can just think of this like this a1 then after this a3 is going to be looking like something this but it will just multiply this same array three times as the fuse of this repeat function hope you got your answer yeah rohini has some doubt it seems There are any I have asked you to unmute, you can just ask it out and tell an answer. Is it out, Rohini? Yeah, you are unmuted, you can ask it out, Rohini. No doubt, sir. Sir, please send yesterday's class, sir. You haven't received yesterday's PPT, is it? 
I don't have, sir. You you can send, sir. All right, I'll send it. I'll send it. I have sent it to the admin. I'll send it to you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Manjula, you have any doubts regards to pandas or like NumPy? No doubt, sir. Then you raise your hand, it seems. Let us just lower your hand. Yeah, Lakshmi Dev, you have any doubt? You can unmute and ask it out. No doubt, sir. All right, then you can just lower your hand now. All right, so in case there is no doubt, we can just move forward now. Again, Rohini, have raised your hand. Is there anything else you want to ask? Do you have a doubt, Rohini, or should I move forward? Yeah, and without then we can just move forward now. All right. So we'll just start now with the pandas practical. You can just carry on and do this practical right in front of me, like right with me, as I am doing it in my system. You can just like type it out right now and start. Yes, you have doubts. Yes. Do you have a doubt? Sir. Just tell me. Sir, can you please uh, tell the yesterday topic, sir, miss, uh, because I will yesterday miss class, miss, sir. So I was already I mean, refreshing the part that I had covered yesterday. The fun, so the uh, data type that we had covered in the last practical, this one. Um, okay. Where is it? This first is what we covered. No, it's already. I mean, we had discussed this only in the last time. Now I showed you the practical. The theory was caught in the last time. Now we are seeing the practical whole of it. I will be sharing the notepad and you can try it out yourself. This is all we had done in the last class. Nothing more about this. All right. So you had the notepad. You can try executing it in your local system. And apart from mm -hmm. that, I had already covered today itself about the functions and all of those things also we had done that in the last class only okay so we will be starting with i mean we'll be continuing with our pandas practical if you have doubt with regard to pandas or i mean regarding to that you can ask right now otherwise i'll ask you to ask I mean wait back after the class and i'll be covering your doubts then so yeah now we'll move to pandas I'll look at pandas. So pandas is basically a library that is used first and foremost only and only to create data frames. So data frames are like, like I showed you, like they are just tables, just tabular uh, data structures that are going to store your SQL like tables into their rows and columns. So if you see, I mean, um, in this data frame, what we have done is basically whatever we had seen like, um, So what we're doing is basically we have imported pandas first. This import function is basically used to import your like pandas into your working directory. Then what we're doing is basically we're reading the data frame that is basically creating out of this CSV. So the CSV also, again, I'll come to this when we actually move towards data engineering. The point is that we'll first come back to this and slides 
will come to know what is exactly happening with the help of pandas data frame. So for now, we can just remember this. I mean, like uh, we had created data frame, and data frame is basically going to have these values. That is going to store this. Let's say one comma two comma three comma four two five, and again. Seven comma eight comma nine comma ten. This is the data frame that we created. Okay. I mean this data frame. When we are passing this df dot head, this df dot head is basically a function of the data frame that is going to display you the first five characters. So with the help of this df dot head, you will be getting the response as one comma two comma three comma four comma five. And with the help of this tail, the tail is the exact opposite of this. Okay. What this will do is it will display the last five characters out of this. This tail is basically going to display the six comma seven comma eight comma nine comma ten. These are going to be the output for your tail command. This different info is basically going to give you the um like information about the data frame. So basically when you type df for info for this data frame, what you're going to get in it is going to be like, it is going to be two cross five elements, total 10 elements, and it is going to have all type of integer. So that is going to be about your idea for info. That is nothing about like, uh, like complex. And it will have like 10 elements that is all in, going to show. Okay. Then we use df to describe. This df to describe is basically going to be used for taking in your like uh, whatever statistical data you have. So like if you have like this data one two three five and six seven eight nine ten, what that will do basically is it is going to take like all of your data and give you the statistical information. So it will tell you that the mean. Is going to be what 10 plus 1 comma the your mean is going to be 5.5 your median is going to be what the median is going to be again I mean sorry the median is going to be 5.5 um, 5. so the basic idea of this is that it is going to show you your statistical description that is what the meaning of this is we'll come to more about this in detail when we learn about statistical I mean the descriptive statistics so they mean they will give out the mean value. They'll give out whatever I mean the answer is for your mode. So your mode is going to be 10 for this. That's what is going to show in the help of your paper describe. Then we'll come to like these again. This DF, these are all descriptions for your like salary data set. This will be worked upon when we actually meet for a practical in terms of like hands-on. With data engineering, these are all parts of data description of data engineering and all. So we'll come to that before that we'll be actually going to learn what is data engineering, data manipulation. Because if I explain this right now, we'll not be able to get an idea. But if I explain you when you actually have an idea of what is data engineering, that will be able to make a better sense out of it. Right? So we'll first see what is data engineering and what is data visualization, and then we'll come back to this topic, which is going to be your data manipulation with pandas. So the whole point of data engineering or data manipulation is first and foremost to get your data into a format that is able to be compliant with pandas. So just like if you have used Excel and all, Excel is basically used for data manipulation itself. So if I show any Excel sheet, the point of any Excel sheet is first and foremost to manipulate your data. Okay. You able to see my slide as a screen share? If you want to raise your hand. So this is what I'm discussing about right now is data manipulation and engineering. So what basically data manipulation is that you want to have some data changed out of your existing data set 
and for that if you want to do it only for one or two data sets like like one or two data points as if you want to change like a data from let's say your name i have written my name is ulrich kunal joshi and i want to change it to kunal joshi itself then i can do data manipulation in excel only i can just and uh, remove like my rudra name and the rest of it remains same but if i don't want to do it on a single element i want to do it on like in masse that is basically i want to do it for like lakhs and lakhs of elements and for that we use this data manipulation techniques like this like sql database management or like crud operations so doing that we basically use these different kind of data manipulation techniques which is first you can like use crud operations then if you want to do it on a much larger scale again you can use data engineering toolkits then if you want like to process the data that is coming live you can use something called as <clears throat> etl pipelines all of that again will coming later when we actually go about learning about uh, like ml ops and all those things but what you want to remember right now is data manipulation is basically like just manipulating data entries out of excel but when you want to automate a task you can use this python pandas library so for doing that for data manipulation we first have to read the data so like up until we have seen how to actually go about creating a data frame with the help of pandas then we'll see how to read the data set from the, with the help of pandas okay so if you saw in my practical that i showed you in my this practical if you can see my screen in this practical itself you can see this i'm calling this um pandas dot read this read is the thing but i am trying to exact like um open that data frame i mean open that csv in the format of data frame so for that learning about that we'll have to first listen what is a csv do you guys know what is a csv if somebody knows it, raise your hand what is a csv yeah so then the, what is a csv Sir, it is comma separated file, sir. Right. Sir, so, while you are explaining the code, can you please show it uh, by executing the output, sir? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. The idea is that first I want to explain you the code and when we meet in the next class, we'll actually use take the data pipeline. I mean, we'll get the data, data manipulation and then run the code live itself. So we'll take the whole project. For now, I mean, I don't want to run the code again and again. So that, I mean, if I make some changes, it again, shows the mirror so right now i'm just showing you the notepad plus plus and then we'll be showing in the next class about the whole thing in python file itself so that you can see the whole picture or the whole project in action okay right? sir, thank you yeah thank you, thank you so the point i was trying to convey is basically what is a csv so csv nothing is i mean it's nothing but like it stands for comma separated values so csvs are basically your files that are actually nothing but your excel sheets that are separated by commas so i mean excel access or like the excel format also stems from the csv itself okay so csv is, is the base of any sort of like your tabular uh, file to manipulate any data out of this also csv is basically stored at the help of like excel sheets only and when you want to actually read a csv you use the data frames uh, period read csv pandas function that is going to actually read your csvs so this read csv function is basically going to take in any sort of a csv just don't pick at the file name right now we'll, we'll see that whole thing in the next class when we actually run the whole project but what we're doing actually is we are taking an excel sheet we tend to read that and load all of it into a data frame so you can imagine that the whole data frame the whole excel sheet is converted into data frame like this So it's i mean it's when you read a csv actually the output comes out with all the elements of the excel sheet stored in the format of a data frame okay then on the basis of this you can use these different functions which is the df.shape it will give you the shape as for this uh, 
this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine, ten. The shape is basically two cross five again. Five. And the column that will give you like the column names. So by default, the column names is going to be zero comma one until and unless you change it. Okay, that is about it. But what is CSV and what are different kinds of like manipulation exercise? So the first thing that you have to take care of is what I mean. How do you read CSVs? And then what we had done is basically we're taking the head and tail and finding the shape and the columns of that. So here also what we have done is we have taken the I mean we have done the head file or like the data frames head part. So what does that show you? The head part will show you whatever number of like input you have given. So you have given five. To show you the first five elements, one, two, three, four, five. And we actually given tail. This will give you the last five elements. That is about this tail and heads. Okay. Now after that, we have like I mean the same thing we had uh, like head tail ke baad, shape and columns. So like the shape again I explained to you. Shape is going to show you the total, I mean, uh, what is the shape or what is the number of rows and columns in that. So this will be like 2 comma 5 for the shape of this DF. And then what you have is the columns. The columns name by default by Python is, is 0, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that way. And the same goes for row also, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. And by default, I mean, once you have your entries given, then when you print the describe function, the describe will actually give you the whole result in the format of a table. That is about exploring the length and breadth of data. Okay. Now we'll come back again to the data engineering part, which is actually the CRUD operations. Have you guys learned about CRUD operations before? Yes, can you give me a like, full form of what is a CRUD operation? Just raise your hand if you know what is the full form of CRUD operation. Yes, Lakshmi Devi is answering what is the full form of CRUD operations. Yes, Lakshmi Devi, you are a uh, speaker. Tell me what is the full form of CRUD operations. Sir, class is complete, sir. Uh, Prakashu, just tell me what is the full form of CRUD operations. I don't know, sir. Okay, please mute yourself then. Okay, then whoever knows what is the full form of CRUD operations, please raise your hand. Yeah. So what is the full form of CRUD operations? Please tell me. You must read. Create, read. Update yes. and uh, delete. Absolutely right. Yes. So CRUD basically stands for create, read, update, delete. So basically whatever data that you're feeding in. So let's say I, in here I have data set. is having the value of 1 to 10, right? So out of this 1 to 10, whatever data that I want to store, I'll have to, store, I'll have to create first. So for creation of the data, what we do is, we first use a create query. So, like if you see the pd dot read csv that we are doing, that read csv is basically a create command. Or if I, I mean, just show you again by sharing this part again. This is what we have done here. We have actually created a new data frame. Or this part again, we have created a new DSV and we have read that this part of it is basically the create operation or the read operation. So the create and read operation are very similar in Pandas data frame. Okay, that is about to create and read. Then we will then we'll be able to like create and read. Then actually when you want to add new columns, so when someone was asking, how do you actually go about adding new, uh, like how do you concat two data frames that is with the help of update. So that update will basically add or like a merge two data frames with one another. And finally you have delete, basically delete is going to store or give out 
the list of all of your, I mean, um, delete or uh, remove some items out of your data frame. That is about that. Okay. That is about your create area update date for functions. So this is about your data in, I mean, manipulation with the help of pandas. Then we'll come to data engineering part. So what is data engineering in general? If you guys have any idea about what is data engineering, you can just type in your comments in the chats. What is data engineering by your idea? The point of data engineering is that first of all, whatever data that you're getting, all of the data has to first be stored somewhere, right? So when you have like a small data, like if you have like only the students of your own university, if you're storing that, you can use only a table that you install. Like, like, I mean, if you want to store the number of books of, let's say, other students, and you can use a table for that, and you can use a table, and you can put the books on top of it. But if you actually have to store the, all the journals, or all the books of your whole university, and for that, you need a larger room, right? You need a store room. Right, so all of the journal will be stacked. I mean, stacked one over the other out, out here. The same process is followed in the case of data also. If you want to store just one table, you can store that with the help of an Excel data. I mean, a worksheet or like a pandas data frame. But if you want to store like a list of thousand 